little foggy out here today, as you can see. I was hoping to go for a nice ride, but uh, don't think I'm going to do that. So what we'll do instead is we're going to go in the garage and uh, we're going to talk about range versus temperature. I think that's a good topic. So I thought today I'd talk a little bit about range versus temperature. I believe it was the video that I made about heating the car while charging and someone asked a com uh, posted a comment asking if I was willing to do a, uh, a range test in extreme cold. I would, but um, I have no place to go that far away, <laughs> to be honest with you. But I have been driving the car back and forth to work every day and a couple of those days it was down to minus 16, minus 17. So we're just going to talk about what I've seen on uh, the cold days versus the warm days. Uh, one thing to remember is when this car is being charged, it's always in the garage, and this garage is kept at roughly four degrees Celsius all winter long. Um, I do that because I have a furnace right over there, and uh, so I might as well use it. And to keep it just above freezing in here really doesn't cost a whole lot. And it's nice, the sm snow melts off your car, so by the morning you got a, a, a snow-free car. It's semi-warm already, you know, and uh, that's why I do it. So, but because of that, when I start driving the car in the morning, the range that it's giving me is not the range that it's assuming because of what it is outside. It's basing that range on 4 degrees Celsius. So generally, after a full night's charge, it's a well, full night, it, it charges overnight for a couple hours until it's done. But when it's at 100%, I generally have about 165 kilometers range. And like I said, the car is estimating that based on, at least what I think, based on 4 degrees, 5 degrees Celsius. So right now, let's just uh, take a look to see what it is in the garage right now. I have a thermometer on the wall, it's over here, this is where the dog stays when it's cold, that's the dog's bed right there, and uh, I don't see him out there anywhere. Yesterday when I came home he was laying on the picnic table having a snooze. So anyways, right up here amongst these cobwebs, you can see it's 5 degrees in the shop here, and that's pretty much normal. So let's go in the car and uh, we'll continue from there. We're in the car, I just turned it on and uh, I got everything turned off in the car. The heat's off, the radio's off, everything is off. So you can see I've got 165 kilometers of range and it's five degrees in the shop. So that is pretty much what I see every single morning, okay? So generally, like I said, when I go to work in the morning I have 165 K and then uh, by the and that's the car is basing that on the temperature that it is now depending on how cold it is outside I could either come home with either um, I've had anywhere from 110 kilometers range I've had one time as high as 120 and um, I've had as low as 80 so let's just figure that out. 80 kilometers of range left when I come home. Well, what, what does that mean? Well, my logic is, is that um, in the summertime, this car is supposed to have 200 kilometers of range. I have no idea because I never had this car in the summer yet. But I've seen many videos where people are getting 200k or more off of this car in the summer when it's warm out. So I'm, I'm going to go with that, 200K. And um, I'm coming home from work when it's really cold out with 80K. And I am doing 60 kilometers of a round trip. So I am thinking that the car's range is actually half because... I'm doing 60k, but I'm losing the equivalent compared to the summertime of 120k, and I'm only doing 60. So 
I'm going to say when it's really cold, and that day when it was at 80, it was the car sat outside all day long while I was at work, and it was minus 16 degrees outside. So when I got in the car after work, it was minus 16. And when I got home, the um, I had 80 kilometers of range. So 80 kilometers doing a hundred or doing a 60 kilometer round trip. Uh, that means it's using uh, that's 50 percent range compared to what it would be in the summertime. If that was in the summertime, I would have 200 uh, kilometers of range, and doing 60k uh, from 200 would leave me with 140. And so that would be what I'm going to consider a normal case scenario in the summertime. So the conclusion is, is that when it's really cold, and I'm talking like minus 16, minus 20, the range of this car is going to be half. That's just the way I, I see it. Is that a problem? No, I don't, I don't think it's a problem. I, you know, I bought this car to go back and forth to work, which is 60 kilometers, and I'm starting off the day with 160. So I don't see an issue. If I really had to, I could probably go two days on a charge. Would I push that? No, no, I wouldn't push it. But nonetheless, if I had to, I could. What people don't realize, you know, you, you hear a lot about range anxiety. And I think that's just a lot of hype from the media, really, because they base it on the way someone drives a gasoline car. You know, your gas car, you fill it up and you drive it till it's almost empty and then you fill it up again. Uh, you don't drive an electric car that way. You don't charge it up and then run it almost empty and then charge it up again. You just, you don't do that. I, I, nobody does that. Okay. An electric car, if you're like me and you have your own place, you charge it every single night. So every single night I, I got the equivalent to a full tank of gas. Not a very big tank. It, it's roughly a third the size of what my car was. But it doesn't matter because it's full every day. I'm not filling it up. Like my red car, I was filling it up once a week. This car, I fill it up every day. Why? Because it's convenient. As I get out of the car and I walk to the to, to the back of the garage door, I just plug it in. There it is. I'm all done. Come in the morning, unplug it, close the door, get in the car and drive. I got a full tank. You don't do that with a gas car. Or maybe you don't have your own place. And uh, where do you charge them? Well, there are options. You can uh, charge at, at a, a local level two charger. Most places, they have a couple of these around. In the bigger cities, there's tons of them. Uh, but for instance, here in Chatham, we have uh, one at the Ford dealership that's free. I know you're not going to go to the Ford dealership all the time. Uh, and the uh, Chevy dealership has one that's free. And there's one at the, at the mall downtown. Um, I know in London... They're all over the place. And in Windsor, there's quite a number of them. That's some, some shopping centers and whatnot. And, and they're free. You just plug in and away you go. So there's that. Uh, also in Ontario, just this week, I read in the news that uh, the Ontario government come, is coming up with a new incentive program for businesses, uh, for employers to install level two chargers at their business and the government will pay up to 80% of the cost of that up to $7,000 I believe it is per per parking space and the number of parking spaces each employer is allowed to do is based on how many employees they have so that's a big incentive for a company to put a, a level 2 charger at their at their business you know the government's going to pay for 80% you know like even if you don't want it you know in 10 years you're going to want it so why not just get the thing now and let the government pay for it? You know, it's, it's simple stuff like that. Uh, if you rent, you know, all it requires is a 220 plug. So maybe your landlord will allow you to get an electrician in and install a 220 plug so you can plug in a charger. Um, so so this whole thing about range anxiety is just, it's, it's baloney to me. Um, this car has more than enough range for anything I'm going to do 95% of the time. That's all I can say. There are exceptions. Um, I'm going to be going to Windsor on um, the 3rd of February to uh, the Essex, uh, Windsor Essex Electric 
car associations get together. So that's on a Saturday. And so I've got to drive from here to Windsor and back. I don't think I can do that on one charge, especially in the winter time, especially if it's cold. But it's no big deal because they have uh, free charging right there. So I'm just going to plug in while I'm there and I should be fine. But yeah, this whole range anxiety thing is just, you know, for the most part, it's not a big deal. I haven't felt anxious at all yet. I don't, just haven't. Anyways, that's my video on temperature versus range. I hope I didn't uh, induce more questions than I answered. <laughs> but uh, anyways, with that, I thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave a comment and hit that thumbs up button. Um, all of these things really help people find my videos. Uh, the more subscribers I have, the more likes I get, the higher I am in the rankings with YouTube and It'll be easier for people to find my stuff. So with that, hope you have a good day. And until next time, take care. So kind of glad I didn't go for that drive because uh, it doesn't look too nice outside. It's getting even foggier than it was. So, yeah, it's kind of strange. It's middle of the afternoon and the fog is just getting worse and worse and worse. So, not a good day for a drive.